Hello and good evening, friends. Today is the first talk in the master series of the ACNS webinars for the month of October. And today we are going to discuss about fundamentals of skull based technique. To speak on this very important topic, we are fortunate to have with us one of the very famous neurosurgeons of skull based region, he is none other than uh, Associate Professor Tetsuro Sameshima from the Department of Neurosurgery, Hamamatsu University School of Medicine. University Hospital Hamamatsu, Japan. Associate Professor Kameshima is a distinguished scholar who also serves as the counselor of the Japanese Society for Skull Based Surgery. He is a distinguished faculty and integral part of various neurosurgical societies, not only in Japan but also in the whole world. He is an active researcher who has published several manuscripts in various reputed journals. Apart from being an excellent surgeon, he is also an excellent teacher. I, along with several other young neurosurgeons, were very fortunate to interact with him and learn from him during our fellowship time in Japan. To chair this session of Skull Base, we are extremely honored to have with us one of the most renowned personalities in the world of Skull Base Surgery, Professor Sebastian Frilich. Professor Frilich is the Professor and Chairman, Department of Neurosurgery, Larry Borsier Hospital, University of Paris, France. Professor Frilich also serves as the Chairman of the WFNS Skull Base Surgery Committee. Now, decorating this vital position in WFNS, his contribution towards the education of young neurosurgeons has been phenomenal. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President of Yoko Kato, I would like to welcome today's speaker, Professor Tetsuro Samishima, as well as the Chair, Professor Sebastian Fulish, to this online platform of ACNS webinars. Dr. Liu Gun Seng from Malaysia is my co-host for today. And with that introduction, may I please hand over the podium to Professor Frilich. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to be part of this, uh, of this seminar. Uh, thanks a lot to ACNS. Uh, I have a strong interaction for many years with Japan and uh, we, have, uh, we are good friends with Tetsuro. So it's, uh, it's even more a pleasure to follow his outstanding lecture. I'm sure he has an outstanding experience and I am eager to learn as uh, all of us. So thank you very much for this opportunity to, to share, to participate and to, to follow and to have a taste of uh, Tetsuro experience in skull base surgery. Thank you very much, Sebastian and Raja. And, uh, so now we should start. So today I try to, to uh, speak about, uh, let me talk about uh, um, fundamentals of, of operative techniques in skull based surgery in my university hospital. So I, my name is Tetsuro Samishima from Japan and uh, I'm living in the uh, Hamamatsu city in Japan. And, uh, so, that, so my um, subspecialty is uh, skull based uh, surgery, like uh, uh, scalpel meningioma, uh, acoustic neuroma, and uh, pituitary adenoma, uh, craniopharyngioma, and the jugular parameteroma. And sometimes I have to uh, perform the, uh, also cerebral vascular uh, disease, uh, like uh, this um, thrombosed giant uh, aneurysm. So, uh, for example, last five years I have a, a to over 200 skull based meningiomas and the spenoid, crinoid, pronamus spenoidal, tubercle mozerae, olfactic groove, diagram mozerae, hydrocosa, heterocryber, CP younger, and bromine magnum. Especially, and uh, my favorite uh, skull based meningioma is, uh, is in the posture fossa. Uh, so, the, uh, fortunately, uh, the, the patient is coming from outside of uh, Japan. And uh, so I have uh, some experience in uh, foreign countries. I have experience of surgery in my foreign countries. And uh, so uh, this picture is a beautiful picture in um, Professor Kato's Bantari University Hospital. So um, let me show you uh, as much as possible and uh, my uh, surgical video. Uh, like a cranial pharyngioma, spinal rigid meningioma, spherical mozerai meningioma, acoustic tumor, heterocryber meningioma, VA thrombos, aneurysm, and the magna meningioma. So we have uh, um, uh, some colleague, young colleagues in my university. I have to teach uh, uh, about the fundamentals of operative techniques in skull based surgery for uh, our legends. 
especially uh, eight essential points. The first one is our zygomatic craniotomy, uh, extra dural drilling, and the shaving of the, the temporal, uh, from the temporal base. And the second one is how to decompress of the optic canal and then how to remove of the anterior crinoid and then elevation of the anterior temporal dura, so called dura propria and the precarious approaches. So, like this. Uh, Professor Dolenz, I have uh, learned, uh, learned uh, a lot of uh, cavernous sinus anatomy. Uh, so that his beautiful uh, picture, um, I learned a lot of the, uh, about uh, cavernous sinus corridor to inside. So uh, let me show you uh, um, uh, Dolenz approach first. So uh, craniopharyngioma. So, uh, so according to the tumor location and the extension, so uh, we have uh, several types of uh, uh, craniopharyngioma, and uh, we choose uh, some approaches. Usually, I choose the interhemispheric trans uh, laminar terminalis approach and the telonal or lithozygomatic. Sometimes I choose the transzygomatic pericabanous trans laminar terminalis anterior temporal approaches. So this uh, case is 30 years old females. Uh, for this case, this tumor, I choose uh, just a simple right side uh, front to temporal approaches. Okay, so just 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 simple front to temporal approaches to this uh, this kind of a cranial pharyngioma. Just a shaving of the uh, temporal base like this, and then I performing a orbital, orbital unlooping. So you can see that this is an anterior crinoid and the super orbital fissure, V1. And uh, so the, this is the um, uh, frontal dura and the temporal dura. This. So I'm elevating the dura propria like this. So that, uh, now I'm performing the anterior crinoid, uh, removing of the anterior crinoid. This is the anterior crinoid. This is the right side of the axis. You can see that. And then tip of the uh, uh, anterior crinoid like this. Here is a carotid. Here you can see the uh, oculomotor. So still I have optic slot. And then so uh, the, sometimes I use a sonobet or a kuza uh, to remove the uh, uh, optic slot. So you can see the nerve, uh, the optic nerve, super orbital fissure, foramen rotundum, ovale, uh, foramen spinosum. So now I am elevating the dura propria like this. Like so now I am opening the dura. Uh, longitudinally uh, along to the uh, optic cis. This is the optic cis. Uh, here is a uh, torrent triangle. So you, you see that this line is a distal dual ring. The optic now. This here is optic uh, IC, internal carotid. The distal dual ring is here. Okay. This is the second now. IC, uh, oculomotor, distal dual ring. Uh, proximal dura ring. So the, uh, this is uh, from uh, a Dorent textbook. So this triangle, so called the Dorent triangle. So you see the C2 and the C3 and distal dura now are open, the distal dura ring using the ophthalmic arteries here and the proximal ring. Now uh, evacuating inside. I am separating the uh, IC perforator from the tumor uh, capsule. You see the stalk. The, this, this tumor is coming from the stalk. You see that. And I'm elevating the tumor capsule from the uh, hypothalamus, like this. Gradually, and then uh, so under the uh, optic nerve. And then finally, I remove the totally this tumor uh, between the uh, optic nerve and the IC, the so called uh, um, optical carotid triangle in here. And you see the stalk and the vaginal artery over there. So, this is also the MRI. So, um, 
So you majority of us uh, craniopharyngioma, I choose the inter-hemispheric translaminal terminus approach like this. Also, this is a six old, old years old boys. Uh, this patient on the left side, uh, optic, uh, acuity and optic field is uh, almost blind. And uh, so after surgery, uh, this side uh, is uh, recovered uh, also normally like this. So also on this girl that has a cranial pharyngioma with a cystic and a calcification. I choose an interhemispheric translaminal terminus approach for this uh, tumors. So meningioma, uh, this is a, a typical right side, uh, spinal rich meningioma. Okay, so, okay, so this is, uh, so uh, you see the tumor is fast and then so I perform the internal debunking as much as possible with a cruiser so like this. And then finally I found the optic now, like right side like this. And then I'm separating uh, from a tumor uh, to preserve the uh, small vessel uh, of the optic nerve like this. So gently. And then, so you can see that. And then now, uh, um, So now I'm uh, looking for the, uh, some IC perforators. Here is a uh, right side IC, the A1 anterior colloidal. And then I'm looking for the uh, PCOM here. You can see that. This one is a right side optic nerve. I'm using the same uh, space between the IC and the optic nerve. So I detach that from the origin the attachment over there and stock, you can see that. And then I can move the tumor so like this. And also I need to preserve the uh, operator from the IC like this. And also this tumor embedded into the uh, uh, also, motoris, and then I remove that, and I'm elevating a tumor capsule from the uh, surface of the brain. I need to preserve the power also, and also on the brain stem. So this is the final view. And this is the right side I see A1, uh, the right side of the nerve, uh, left side chiasma, uh, stroke, and the vaginal artery, uh, CA, and the PCOM, and the oculomotor. So this patient uh, optic uh, power on the field uh, recovered like this. So next one is a uh, um, tuberculosis meningioma. Okay. So show the videos. Left side, uh, uh, that's a simple uh, frontotemporal approach. So you can see the tumor, tumor is here. So still, uh, I don't see the left side optic nerve and the carotid. So I'm looking for the uh, optic nerve and the carotid. So uh, finally, I can find the IC and the optic nerve here, and tumor is uh, here and here. Also inside um, uh, under the IC and the optic nerve, the tumor is still here. So this is the left side optic nerve. The chiasma is around here. So the, uh, I already I removed the anterior crinoid, tumor invaded the, the dura like this. So I am elevating the tumor from IC, to over IC. I am uh, also elevating the tumor from the optic nerve, left side optic nerve. And then I detach the uh, origin tuba. Still, uh, I have a lot of tumor here. So this is a uh, pre-chiasmatic system. 
So this is a finally I detach the from sugar from zero. Yeah, here is the attachment of the tumor. Still, uh, tumor um, stay uh, under the uh, IC and the left side of the knob, like this. And then the, uh, I, so the finally, I can find the uh, right side of the canal here. And still, I need a, a decompression, internal decompression, uh, using a, a CUSA, the elevating the tumor, a gently. Uh, we have to take care of the super uh, hypophysia artery. Then small perforator, some small perforator, but this one. So this finally, I see the chiasma is here. Right side of the nerve, left side of the nerve, and the small vessel is the super hypophysia. This is a, a yeah. post-operative MRI. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So also under this kind of a tumor, and uh, I will skip the video. I did uh, just a left side, a simple, uh, front temporal approaches and the anterior crinoid uh, removal and the optic canal decompression and then I, I, I removed as much as possible to preserve the uh, optic nerve. This patient optic power and uh, optic uh, field and recovered uh, like this. So uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, approaches for posterior foster surgery, uh, lateral and midline approaches and then uh, in lateral approaches uh, we have a uh, uh, many, many uh, variations, uh, electroshumoid, transcondylar, transmastoid, transjugular with high cervical, and the uh, anterior transpetrosa and the posterior transpetrosa approaches. So uh, this is a uh, um, variation of the posterior posterior surgery. Uh, also uh, anterior transpetrosa, uh, uh, this one, uh, uh, go into the uh, pro, uh, posterior posterior. Uh, from the middle fossa, and the posterior transpetrosa approaches uh, uh, go into the pre sigmoid area. Like this. So, CP angle meningioma, and how to choose the uh, approaches. Uh, usually, uh, I uh, focus on the seven and eight, pair the seven and eight. If seven and eight is located in the ventral, rostral, and the caudal of the tumor, I choose a lateral schumoid approach. Uh, if seven and eight uh, stay in the dorsal of the tumor, I choose anterior transpetrosal approach. If the tumor is a huge and large one, uh, I choose a combined transpetrosal approach. It depends on the tumor. And uh, we uh, should know the, uh, some uh, random uh, to uh, for craniotomy for posterior post surgery. Uh, especially for a uh, young colleague, and uh, we need to touch the asterium, idium, digastric group, and the mastoid chip. And then we can uh, imagine uh, where is the transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus. And usually, asterium on the uh, uh, um, above of the transverse sinus. And the transverse sinus and sigmoid sinus junction is uh, usually a uh, 10 millimeter anterior, 5 millimeter below from the anterior. So that's a little schumer approach. This is a trigeminal neuralgia. This is a hemifacial spasm. This is a CP angle meningioma or acoustic neuroma. So sometimes, uh, no, uh, usually uh, I make the two bar hole uh, junction on the junction and uh, uh, just above of the condyle. And then sometimes we need to remove uh, uh, the uh, partial work on the like this. And, and so that's not unusual uh, to open the uh, pramemagram, uh, uh, pramemagram for a gospel neuroma. So we have many variations. We add uh, mastoidectomy and transcondylar approach and from the compression for a large acoustic, uh, large uh, meningioma, CP and lateral side uh, meningioma. So this is my uh, lateral portion, just a simple lateral portion. So everything is straight, everything is straight. And just a bit, uh, uh, shoulder is far from uh, me. A, a, not to disturb the, my uh, surgical uh, field. 
uh, to keep a wide surgical field, not to uh, disturb the uh, microscope on the left side. And so just just a little bit uh, go down to uh, the other side like this. So we need a monitoring ABR uh, direct facial nerve simulator, uh, continual, continuous simulating monitoring of facial nerve. And uh, sometimes I use a e EMG tube and MMT. So retrosigmoid lateral suboxial approaches. So retrosigmoid approach is very useful for CP angle meningioma, neurinoma, epidermoid, and uh, microvascular decompression for facial spasm and the trigeminal neuralgia and brain stem carbianoma. Let me show you some uh, surgical video. I think this is a, uh, just a simple uh, CP angle meningioma. Seven, seven and eight nerve is uh, uh, the other side, far from a uh, surgeon, and uh, I choose uh, just a simple retrosigmoid approaches, also this one. And then so that we expect this patient uh, hearing disturbance and uh, recover. Oh. Uh, okay, I'll skip the video. Also, this one, uh, CPM. This one is a tetrochentoria uh, meningioma. Just a uh, simple retrosigmoid approach is, uh, is enough for this kind of a tumor. Uh, we can expect a uh, uh, patient uh, hearing disturbance and uh, ataxia uh, to, to improve. Okay. So, neuroma, acoustic neuroma. Can you see that? And uh, my favorite skin incision is a C-shaped incision like this. Okay. So uh, I told you uh, that uh, we need, I need a two bar hole is enough. That the first one is a junction of the transverse and tumor sinus, and the second one is here. And uh, we we usually I, I don't need to expose the tumor sinus totally. So the dural incision. So like this. So uh, this one is a big one, a big acoustic neuroma. This patient uh, is a, a nurse in, in my university hospital. And also this is a 70 years old girl uh, with hydrocephalus. Also this one, uh, uh, this woman uh, is a nurse in a different hospital with uh, hydrocephalus. So this is the 11 years old uh, girl uh, this tumor is very difficult because uh, uh, you see the high chagra uh, bar uh, because of this disturb to export the IAC totally. So very, very difficult. So let me show you again. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can see that. Oh, okay, okay. This is, this is uh, uh, the right side of uh, caustic neuroma. So I, I'm looking for the facial node. So just one percent uh, is stay uh, facial node stay the surface. I mean the dorsal. Just one percent. So we, we have to take, take care of the of, uh, where is the facial node. So now I'm opening a, a posterior uh, wall of uh, ISC, the internal repelling as much as possible, like this. And then going back to the ISC, fundus of ISC, I remove the uh, uh, tumor uh, totally. I'm separating the tumor from the uh, super vestibular, inferior vestibular, and also a patient of like this. And then uh, I'm going back to the brain stem side, and uh, I'm elevating the tumor like this. Yeah, I removed it uh, totally like this. This young lady uh, told me uh, to keep the uh, hearing and the patient up. So sometimes I have to give the tumor capsule on the breast stem and the patient up like this. Also this guy, the patient. So the also, okay. So I remove the tumor from inside. Uh, I mean the subcapsular dissection from the inside. And then you 
need uh, this uh, tumor capsule. I need to leave the tumor capsule to keep the uh, cochlear nerve and the facial nerve. These are my regular craniotomy. So the small one, small intracanalicular acoustic tumor is, uh, I think uh, 20 years ago, I choose a middle post approach like this because uh, it's easy to see the hands of IEC, so like this. But the uh, uh, facial nerve is coming out fast and uh, exposing is sometimes uh, difficult. And uh, so they now recently, uh, uh, even for small acoustic tumor, I choose a simple retrosigmoid approach. So like this, very, very small acoustic tumor, uh, especially for uh, young people, young patients, I try to remove the totally. Uh, usually I recommend the surgery part. So there's a very small one, very, uh, you see the ACE now and the patient now. It's much, much, much easier uh, surgery uh, than a uh, large one. I put a continuous special nerve stimulator and uh, I opened a small IAC like this. Maybe one centimeter is enough. And then you see the tumor. And then I'm elevating a tumor from a inferior vestibular nerve. This tumor is coming from, a, I think, a super vestibular nerve. This one is a now I'm elevating from a super vestibular nerve. Okay. Super vestibular nerve and the inferior vestibular nerve. So you can see the anatomy. Much, much easier than the large one. Separating uh, from a normal nerve. And I'm, I'm uh, removing the, from the IAC, bundles uh, of IAC, like this. You see the distant transverse crest is here. And I limb that totally like this. And you see the super vestibular facial nerve is here, super vestibular, inferior vestibular, and the cochlea is under the here. Uh, we can preserve the facial nerve function and hearing. So I recommend the surgery for. Uh, young ladies, uh, especially young patient, uh, MRI. Uh, I preserve the hearing like this. The trigeminal nerve, so also uh, according to the tumor uh, location and extension, uh, we can choose uh, uh, approaches. The, uh, the majority of our middle fossa, uh, we choose uh, middle fossa approaches. Uh, this, for this uh, kind of tumor, we choose a retroschimoid and uh, this dumbbell shape, uh, we choose anterior spectral approaches. So this uh, is a uh, good uh, uh, for uh, middle course uh, approaches. Uh, this one is anterior spectral approaches. Uh, approaches. So microvascular decompression is uh, a small craniotomy I use. It. Uh, this one is a facial uh, trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, this one is a hem facial spasm. The small craniotomy is enough. So just a simple lateral uh, position. Then I put the uh, AVR and the facial nerve smear like this. So let me show you the um, so, uh, surgical video. Okay. This is uh, uh, left side, left side, and. Uh, I keep the sometimes the fascia, a cerebral muscle the fascia to do the closure. Uh, I make a bar hole, just one bar hole like this. And then cut the dura like this. And then go inside. And then usually I see the uh, 11 snaps and 10, 11, and the 12 is over there. And then you see the VA and the ninth nerve here. I elevate the VA from a brain stem like this. And I push, uh, uh, I use a, uh, uh, this one, I, uh, under the VA. Sometimes I use a gel form and a cotton like this. I 
move the uh, brie to the media side. And then I uh, elevate the brie from the facial nerve to uh, the petrous uh, dura. And then I uh, finally I elevate the PICA from the root exit zone of facial nerve like this. Okay. Then finally I can uh, make a free of the let root exit zone and with the facial nerve like this. And the patient facial nerve and the disappear. So like, like this. This is a left side uh, trigeminal uh, neuralgia. Uh, also, I uh, uh, keep the uh, fascia uh, to do the closure like this, and uh, I am uh, separating a uh, splenius muscle from the uh, super nuchal line. And I make a uh, one bar hole, and uh, just a bit, I um, enlarge the uh, bone window. I cut the dura, then go into the inside. So you can see the brie, a large brie is here, and the trigeminal is over there. So I need to uh, move to, uh, uh, from, far from um, a trigeminal like this. Brie, the brie, and uh, to make a move to the uh, medial side. Okay. Very difficult type and the trigeminal. And then uh, I attach the uh, brie to the petrous uh, natura using a gel foam and the fibrin glue. Like this. Put on the uh, petrous uh, uh, natura. And then I move it, attach that to uh, this one. Push here. And uh, I wait a 30 seconds. And this is the trigeminal, trigeminal, very thin trigeminal. And then finally, uh, and then I can um, uh, move the uh, big brie uh, to uh, the medial side uh, to uh, from the uh, trigeminal. Uh, the brainstem uh, cavernoma also. I choose a little simple, little simple approach. Uh, go into the, this side, the right side at the hip younger area. Uh, between the trigeminal and the facial nerve, okay? and then remove the uh, inside. The patient and uh, recover the, everything. Also, uh, this kind of uh, brainstem cavernoma, I choose a little schema approach like this. So, the uh, transcondial, I will skip this one. So, uh, transcondial approach is a very nice approach for uh, from a magnum meningioma like this. Uh, also, I did this one. So, this one um, for a magnum meningioma, uh, this kind of um, for a magnum meningioma, and the cavernous hemangioma is a very good uh, approach, uh, trans transcondylar approaches. Sometimes I use a, a thrombose, vertebral artery thrombose, uh, annular, compressed it to the medulla. This. Oh, yeah. This yeah. Uh, yeah, compressed uh, uh, medulla. So I keep the uh, extra dura brie first. Like this. And then uh, go inside. Uh, you, you see that this, uh, this one is the left side from the magnum. Uh, Jigura chubaku, occipital condyle, and the brie is here. Then I cut the dura like this. And then you can see the uh, 
aneurysm you hear under the uh, of the membrane. So my young colleague uh, tried to uh, put a clip uh, to the uh, distal VA and the medial proximal VA. Now my young colleague uh, performing uh, proximal trapping like this. So this is that working. Now I try to decompression the inside. I cut the uh, surface and then you see the inside and then thrombosis. So they um, are separating from a uh, uh, medulla. And this white one is a dentate ligament. This one is a medulla. I'm elevating the aneurysm uh, wall. Sometimes uh, the very, uh, I see the very strong adhesion. Uh, according to the uh, uh, you know, sometimes the vascular right? like this and I'm, I'm elevating it gently from the medulla, surface of medulla and then finally I do everything like this The transmastoid approach is very useful for a uh, uh, translabyrinthine approach for acoustic neuroma and the combined, combined petrol approach for uh, uh, petrochloral meningioma and the transjugular high cervical uh, approach for jugular from schwannoma or glomus tumor. This is acoustic neuroma. Uh, but this patient already hearing is gone and uh, I choose a transmastoid approach. So uh, we don't need to uh, uh, elevate uh, the, the cerebellum, this traction. We don't need the traction of the cerebellum. And uh, we can export the fundus of uh, ISC and uh, much, much easier to remove that uh, tumor. So, so uh, transjugular approaches uh, are usually uh, used for uh, jugular foramen tumor, like this uh, dumbbell type, uh, large jugular foramen tumor. Is so this illustration show uh, the type C, like this, and tumble type, and the transmastoid with uh, high cervical uh, uh, exposure that we need. So this patient uh, that recovered the kid's uh, uh, hearing and facial nerve palsy. So and, uh, last one is the uh, uh, trans uh, petrodal approach. So until the trans petrodal approach is uh, extra subtemporal. Uh, approach it to uh, to the brain stem uh, through the uh, trigeminal nerve, and the posterior transpetal approach is uh, using a very pretty uh, pretty area uh, to the uh, brain brain stem. The anterior trans approach is a good approach for uh, middle side to small side uh, uh, petrochloral meningioma, the uh, small incision and uh, shift now. Uh, knife incision and uh, usually four, cent four by four centimeter uh, craniotomy is enough uh, for these approaches. So we need to identify the uh, fair GSPN and genuclear GSPN, genuclear uh, ganglion, uh, get eminence, petrous leach, and pre three. And uh, we can uh, remove the, this area to, to preserve the uh, cochlea like this and to export the posterior postatura. So you see the ISC, uh, GSPN, genuclear ganglion, inferior petrolal, uh, petrolal sinus, uh, clivus, uh, superior petrolal sinus, uh, superior petrolal sinus, and uh, uh, arcade eminence, like this. And cut the uh, dural incision uh, from the temporal and the posterior posterior, and also cut the uh, superior petrolal sinus, uh, cut the tentorium to preserve force nerve, 
and then so we need to take care of the uh, six lab uh, because the tumor is uh, located uh, here and then uh, usually under the tumor uh, six lab is here so in German so like this so many German is good so this side is uh, we have to take care of the six lab we have the six lab the tumor is here so also this kind of tumor the combined transpetrol, usually I perform the transmastoid approach first and I make a group the subtemporal and suboxital and then craniotomy like this. So, so like, like this. And then cut the uh, tentorium and then cut the superpetrol sinus and then cut the free ischemo dotura and then expose the uh, all cranial nerves and the tumor. So like this, I need to uh, make a situation that is of the free. Maybe next time I will show you uh, this uh, uh, surgical video. Uh, I use a combined petrol approach for this uh, large uh, petrol cryval benigioma. So uh, just a bit, I left the uh, tumor capsule on the brain stem and the patient recovered everything like this. Maybe this young girl also. So also uh, this guy, this patient. This patient uh, hearing will be also recovered uh, to the almost normal. Maybe I will finish. This also, it, it depends on the adhesion on the uh, surface of the brainstem. I need to remove the, uh, some uh, pieces of the tumor to preserve the uh, old function. Uh, this patient all, uh, also uh, hearing is recovered uh, to the, this uh, uh, almost to the normal like this. Maybe I'll finish. Oh, next time I'll show you a surgical video. Uh, I'm so sorry, and I, I, it's not a smooth uh, to show you. I'm so sorry. And maybe I'll finish. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. We were <laughs> this is my uh, some of my colleagues, uh, fellows, and residents. We were following this uh, this presentation. Fantastic uh, cases, and. Uh, Yes, I have, I have uh, some questions, Tetsuro, about yes. uh, some of the, the techniques you have shown and uh, some of the pathology. Let's, <laughs> let's start with uh, schwannoma. Acoustic I, schwannoma. Acoustic schwannoma, yes. yes. I have yes. to say that uh, in France now, for small mm -hmm. schwannoma... Yes, uh, yes. Gamma also, life. Yes, we are using gamma yeah, life. Yeah. In, in Japan part. also, yes. yes. It depends, it depends. I personally, uh, mm -hmm. I am not operating anymore small schwannomas below mm -hmm. two centimeters. It's, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's not very often, in fact, yeah. mm -hmm. because we have been quite satisfied over the year with, uh, with uh, gamma knife for those small yeah. tumors. So, <laughs> so I was talking about schwannoma. Yes, a that small one. Yeah, we, small we, one. We are not operating much uh, uh, small schwannoma. Yes. But uh, when for the schwannomas that are larger, larger or the giant mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. uh, what is your strategy to achieve a complete resection? Or sometimes you leave some tumor along yes. the national and cochlear nerve to keep the yes, nerve exactly, back. exactly, yeah, exactly to, to, to be to preserve the uh, especially facial nerve function. The, uh, sometimes I need to leave the, some piece of a tumor. Uh, it depends on the adhesion to the facial nerve. I need to leave the, some pieces. But in which percentage uh, uh, are you leaving some tumor? Is it 5% uh, where you leave a piece of tumor along the nerve or is it 40%? Uh, yeah, very, very, very small percent. Very small percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you follow the patient and uh, if the tumor yes, yes. Goes, you do radio radio surgery. Yes, yes, B very few, very few, very few no, patients. Very few, yeah, very few. So the no, goal no, of no surgery, so the goal of surgery, the first goal, still is to to try to achieve a, a, a complete resection if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. I have to say that I have a different strategy. My my first objective is really mm -hmm. to keep the facial nerve intact. Okay. And I leave, uh, I leave more tumor along the nerve. It's not, uh, okay. it's, it's not 5%. I would say in around 30, 40%, uh, 
Okay. I leave a thin layer of tumor along the nerve. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is visible on the post-op MRI. And mm -hmm. in those cases, if it's mm -hmm. growing, we do radiosurgery. If oh, I okay. leave a big piece, a big piece, which is not yeah. very often, which is quite rare, but something okay. that is thick on the MRI, mm -hmm. uh, that is obvious on the MRI, we do, we do radiosurgery. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, upfront in those cases. Yeah. So we have a yeah, different... Yeah, yeah, I, oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I, I agree you, yeah. About your craniopharyngioma cases, it was, uh, mm -hmm. it was a beautiful video that you have shown. Are you using sometimes the endoscopic endonasal approach for craniopharyngioma yeah. or not at all? Yeah, uh, uh, um, transpedular approach is uh, uh, each tumor located in the uh, intra... Uh, what to say? Sera, um, intracera, intracera type. Intracera. Intracera type. Sometimes yeah. I, yeah, I perform the transnasal approaches. Okay. The, and the, sometimes the tumor extended to the southern nerve, uh, I, I perform the two stage surgery from transnasal and transcranial. Okay, but for, for a tumor that is uh, cellar, supracellar, behind the infundibulum, a little bit mm -hmm. like the one you have shown, uh, mm -hmm. you are not considering uh, endoscopic endonasal approach. You use transnasal yeah, usually, or yeah. proposal. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because uh, um, I, I don't have a confidence to, to you know, separate from the optic knob. Okay. Yeah, safety. So the microscope is uh, uh, good for me and I, so I can, uh, you know, separate uh, from an uh, um, optic knob from the tumor. It's much more very uh, doing well for me than endoscopic. Okay. And in, no. which cases, in which cases are you considering posterior petrosal approach for craniopharyngioma? Are you using this, this no, approach? No, like no, 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 I don't use that. Yeah. Okay. I don't you use, use transylvian or translamina terminalis? Yes, yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. And uh, um, your cases about uh, foramen magnum were, was very nice. Do you often drill the condyle for for amen magnum meningioma, or mm -hmm. and and for what purpose do you do you drill the condyle? Yeah, it's a, it's a, limitation is a hypoglossal canal. Okay. Limitation, yeah. Limitation is a hypoglossal canal. Yeah. But you you it, it, it's, it's enough. It's enough. It's, it's enough. enough. But you yeah. systematically drill the condyle for for mm -hmm. magnum meningioma. Yeah, just a little bit because uh, so uh, uh, foramen magnum meningioma is uh, uh, already makes a space. Yes, that's what yeah. I wanted. To so say. that yeah, so that usually we don't need uh, to remove the so uh, you, you know uh, condyle. Okay. Just uh, just my purpose is uh, uh, remove the jugular tubercle. Okay. To make the to flat. expose yeah. to expose a little bit of the base, but not yes. necessarily drilling the condyle by itself. Yes. You drill the exactly. bone exactly. or the condyle, but the yes. tumor exactly. creates the, the working space. Yes, exactly. And for, uh, for posterior petrosal approach for petroclival meningioma, are you sometimes mm -hmm. using the posterior petrosal approach alone without an anterior petrosectomy? Or when you do a posterior petrosal, you always associate the posterior petrosal to an anterior petrosectomy. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean the, um, you know, partial, uh, the, the small, um, I mean the, uh, what to say, you know, my posterior transpetrosal approaches are usually combined transpetrosal approaches. Okay. Me, so, but uh, so it depends on the tumor size. I, I make a more, much more minimize, you know, okay. uh, anterior petrosal approach. The majority so, of uh, transpetrosal approaches are from the posterior fossa. Post, post, you know. 
on its combined. It's usually yes, yes. a combination of posterior petrosal. Sometimes yeah, you exactly. use a posterior petrosal approach alone, but when yeah. you use posterior petrosal approach, most often it's it's part of a of a combined petrosal where you want yes. yeah. your petrosectomy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was uh, that was very nice uh, experience that yeah. you shared. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. How about we may take some questions from the audience? Okay. Again? Yeah, please, Professor Suresh. Uh, nice uh, videos, uh, Professor Tetsuro. A couple yeah. of queries from my end. Uh, what is your indication for operating a intracanalicular schwannoma? Is it yes. to preserve hearing or it yes. is to preserve uh, facial nerve function? What is your indication? Yeah, um, actually, and uh, especially for young patient, yeah. I also I um, recommend a gamma knife also, yeah. gamma knife or a surgery. Yeah. The patient uh, can select yeah. which therapy, gamma okay. knife or a surgery. So that I my 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 opinion, my opinion is uh, the gamma knife stereotactic radial surgery is very nice okay okay yeah, for uh, inter auditory canal but uh, okay. some patient is coming back after radio surgery okay so the uh, the small one is acoustic neuroma is very easy to pre yeah. to mm -hmm. remove the totally and preserve the uh, hearing and the facial nerve function and uh, i so the i recommend especially for a young patient, okay. even small okay. acoustic neuroma. So of, will of, be, course, uh, of course, pa patients can uh, choose if they want to go to the gamma line. Yeah. I recommend, yeah, I recommend. So, but, so will, will you treat a intracanalicular vestibular schwannoma patient who is deaf, patient has no hearing, intracanalicular schwannoma, what will mm -hmm. you do? You will observe or you will treat that patient? A intracanalicular... Yeah, in, yeah, if, if tumor is a, yeah, if tumor is a, uh, uh, gradually uh, getting larger than previous MRI, I recommend to remove the totally. Okay, okay. Patient also, is already also, patient. Yeah, also yeah. They, they can go the gamma knife also. Okay, also. okay. Yeah, perfect. Now, now yeah. I have one, one more question. Yeah, I say, yeah. I, I say uh, in, instead of combined petrosal approach, a large yeah. phenopetroclival meningioma, <laughs> yes. uh, have you tried two stage, removing the posterior fossa component through a retrosigmoid and the middle fossa through an anterior petrosectomy in two stages? Mm -hmm. So what is your opinion on that? Many people have shifted back from uh, combined posterior transpetrosal approach to two mm -hmm. stages. Because it's simple, yeah. electrosigmoid approach to decompress posterior fossa, then come mm -hmm. from above anterior petrosectomy to remove the middle fossa. So, what yeah. is your take on that? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I agree that. Uh, that. So, some years ago, I, I did a two stage yeah. uh, uh, approach, but uh, recently I can do the uh, more quickly uh, trans mastoid mastoidectomy and the anterocrinoidectomy yeah. and anter, uh, I'm sorry, anterior trans petrosa approaches more quickly. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I performed uh, uh, just uh, one stage surgery. Okay. Uh, I, I saw one of your operation, you are doing a trans labyrinthine approach for a patient who is already deaf. Trans lab. So I saw, I saw a video, you are doing a lab approach. How about mm -hmm. retrosigmoid approach for a large vestibular schwannoma? Uh, you do still retrosigmoid or you do all uh -huh. cases uh, trans lab only if patient uh, is... Yeah, 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 yeah. If uh, your patient is already deaf, uh, sometimes I choose a trans, uh, trans lab approaches. But okay. uh, recently, uh, the majority of acoustic neuroma I uh, choose uh, uh, just a simple retrosigmoid approaches okay. because uh, more quickly, more okay. short uh, surgical mm -hmm. time, yeah. uh, much more simple, much yeah. more easy. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So the, I choose a, a just a simple retro schumer approaches. Right. Uh, Professor Tetsuro, I have one more question. Yes. You, yes. Have you got any special special techniques for opening the porous trigeminus in uh, middle fossa, posterior fossa, a uh, dumbbell mm -hmm. trigeminal schwannoma? Mm -hmm. uh, what is your, uh, the, how, how do you open the porous trigeminus? Do you have any special techniques or? Uh, how do no, you no, no. I, I don't have a so, not so special technique. Just uh, I open the from uh, extra jewelry, okay. ele 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 elevate the dura propria, yeah. and uh, I just uh, I, I cut the dura longitudinally uh, towards a yeah. uh, Meckel's cave. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, oh. I, I I can open the yeah uh, pores of uh, okay. trigeminal. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much. You very much. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Professor Hideto Kimura. Oh, Professor Tamishima. Uh, good evening. So all our, our colleagues and uh, uh, nice to see you, Professor Sebastian, um, again here. So, so my question. I have some several uh, some question for you, but uh, I have two questions yeah. now here for you. So okay. yeah. So you showed so many excellent uh, surgical cases showing your. Uh, meticulous mm -hmm. procedure for me, for us. And so a very, very amazing uh, techniques for me also. So what is the technical tips to manage the preservation for the hearing function, mm -hmm. even in the large acoustic tumor? You showed in your presentation that you, you totally the tumor, tumor removal in the acoustic tumor, yeah, yeah, yeah. the mm -hmm. hearing preservation, the uh, yeah. hearing function. Yeah, um, so, uh, 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 I, I told you that, uh, so I remove that as much as possible, I remove the, uh, the amount of a tumor, even a, a big, huge, acoustic uh, tumor, but uh, such, a, such kind of a big acoustic tumor, the uh, majority of the such kind of tumor patient has uh, already death. But uh, some some uh, patient either has a, a still a class B or some sometimes very rare class A, and uh, I it, it try to keep the hearing, but uh, uh, very rare to keep the hearing. It, it depends on the I use the ABR, and then I so, you know, and then I tried, but uh, some patient has uh, hearing getting down okay, in yeah. the huge. Acoustic tumor, but the small one, and, and uh, into a canonical tumor, and the small one, uh, less than two centimeter. Uh, majority of the uh, such a small tumor, uh, I uh, I think I can keep the hearing. Yeah, but uh, sometimes when we preserve the uh, uh, auditory nerve. Uh, cochlear nerve intraoperatively. However, the mm -hmm. postoperatively patient. Uh, Complain mm -hmm. the hearing de uh, deterioration sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. I think there's some some factor to the for the postoperative deterioration of the hearing of the patient, even if we preserve the uh, uh, cochlear. ABR. Uh, yes, of mm -hmm. course, ABR. So yeah. you show uh, the I, I I don't know, but but uh, yeah, maybe uh, some you know uh, vascularize. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know, uh, maybe a blood flow or something, uh, but yeah, uh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have some I'm, uh, I'm not sure. special, special uh, administration for the patient, post-operative, intravenous administration, some drugs, especially? No, 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 nothing, nothing. So I, my second question is, uh, we, well, sometimes we encounter the so calcified hard meningioma. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, very. Uh, especially in super sometimes we encounter less, uh, uh, so frequently than the posterior fossa meningioma. So, how do you manage the so hard to calcify the meningioma to remove? To uh, the, yeah, the, just just uh, cut the yeah, uh, using your opinion. A, yeah. yeah, just yeah, you, uh, show, you didn't show the so hard yeah. meningioma in yeah. just uh, uh, we need the scissors, very hard scissors. Scissor? To, yeah, yeah, special scissors to cut the hard tumor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor yeah. Kimura. May yeah, I please yeah. uh, ask the same question to Professor mm -hmm. Sebastian Frilich. Well, what are the tips that you can give us in the preservation of hearing in large acoustic neuromas? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. 
I, I have to say that for fascial nerve preservation and uh, on cochlear nerve preservation, I have a I have a quite specific technique where I find the surgical plan between the perineurium and the tumor, the kind of capsule on the tumor at the level of the porous. So once I have drilled the, the porous, you can find the dura of the porous. And here, this is where I make my incision of the dura, and this is where I can find the plan, the surgical plan for the dissection. And uh, you, you saw in, in one of the videos from, uh, from Professor Sameshima that he kept a kind of capsule that is almost transparent. And uh, if you keep this capsule that is floating and transparent, you don't see the nerve, in fact. In my opinion, if you start to see the cochlear nerve, uh, well, it's already it's already a very high risk of losing hearing. So I'm not searching for the nerve, I'm searching for this surgical plan. And uh, once I have it, I uh, do everything I can to keep it uh, as long as possible. And in a significant number of cases, you can remove the tumor without seeing the nerve. And in those situations, that's where the, the, the hearing and fascial nerve preservation have, uh, is, is the best. Uh, if you look for the nerve deep into the internal auditory canal, or if you look at the nerve at the brainstem, I don't think it's a proper technique for schwannoma. Schwannoma is a tumor that is inside, is, uh, is, is inside the perineurium of the vestibular nerve. So you should not see the, the fascial nerve cochlear nerve, in my opinion. And uh, like this, even in large or giant schwannoma, sometimes I have, uh, I have hearing preservation uh, where I would not expect it because the tumor is very big, but just because I have never seen the nerve. So on a, another trick I think is to avoid traction along the axis of the fascial nerve or cochlear nerve. It's good to dissect a nerve uh, like this, but never along the axis. Up down is possible, but from lateral to medial or medial to lateral, this is very dangerous for the nerve. The nerve don't like to be tracked like an elastic, but you can mobilize it uh, from one side to the other. This is why drilling the internal auditory canal first is very important because you start with a decompression of the nerve at the level of the porous. Right. And uh, do you perform tractography uh, in uh, large vestibular schwannomas? No, I have localize? no experience with that. I have no experience with that yet. Okay. But question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it would change my technique because again, I am not looking for the nerve. Whatever is the position of the nerve, I'm not looking for the nerve. I'm looking for the good surgical plan. Right. That is an excellent technique, but comes with a lot of experience. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, uh, my co-host, Dr. Liu Boon Seng. Thanks for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I wanted to uh, find out from you now your opinion regarding uh, achieving Simpson 1 or Simpson 0 in skull-based meningioma. What's the thought? Uh, are you routinely removed the dura and do a, give a, a use a dura substitute for skull-based meningioma? Uh, it depends, it depends. Yeah, it depends. It depends. Yeah. yeah, here it's attachment. Yeah. Usually, um, I leave uh, um, attachment. You leave it. Dura. My second question to you, Prof. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I attended a, a talk by Professor Almeti. He do not agree to use radio surgery for meningioma. What's your thought, Prof? What's your opinion about this? Oh, really? I, I don't know that. Do, do you use uh, radio surgery for meningioma in skull base, Prof? Yes, uh, if, if tumor is a, after surgery, if tumor is a growing up, and uh, yeah, I do that. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Yes, Professor Takashi Kon. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Samashima. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, the great lecture and great uh, anatomical knowledge and great uh, 
operative techniques. And uh, I'm now using the, uh, uh, mainly doing the surgery of malignant brain tumor, so uh, not the scar brain surgery, but um, uh, you presented about the uh, cranial pharyngioma. So uh, how do you uh, uh, operate cranial pharyngioma with uh, transcranial surgery alone or uh, combined endo endoscopic surgery? Endoscopy, uh, uh, yeah, um, if tumor extended to other, um, to other third ventricle from the sera, okay. usually I do the combined surgery so com from transnasal and craniotomy. Transcranial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's not thing. only uh, endoscopic surgery. I, 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 I don't do that only okay. for, uh, yeah. Uh, Right. Thank you. Thank because, you very because, much. Uh, because right. I, I don't have so much uh, confidence uh, to, to oh. separate uh, gently from the optic That's nerve. You know? <laughs> I, I, um, I need more experience uh, to use uh, endo uh, 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 oh, okay. endoscopic surgery. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. I think we have far exceeded today's uh, time. Uh, may I please invite Professor uh, Rilich to say the closing comments? Well, Professor it was uh, it was very nice. It was very nice to so to see those videos and uh, on surgeries from from Tetsuro. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a huge experience in skull based surgery. We could speak like this for forever, sharing <laughs> tip and tricks. <laughs> But, uh, but yes, this is, uh, this is skull based surgery, managing different types of approach, being able to reach those complex tumor from different angles. I think this is definitely what's, uh, what a skull based surgeon need. He needs to, to be able to choose a good approach for uh, a specific patient. And we had yes. a great example of, uh, of this uh, strategy. Thank you very much again. Yeah, so, thank you very much. Nice thank you very see. much for your good comment. Okay, with that note, may we please uh, end this session. On behalf mm -hmm. of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yuko Kato, I hereby extend my sincere thanks to our speaker, Professor Tetsuro Samishima, as well as Chair Professor Sebastian Trilich, who came here and gave us such a very elaborate lecture and tips and tricks about uh, skull based techniques. Thank you very much uh, to Thank all the much. audiences. Thank you, Lou, my co-host for today. So until next Saturday, it is all bye-bye from all of us. Thank you very much, everybody who joined.